Okay, folks, so <clears throat> here I am in our slightly becoming Paragon game. Um, and I've gone ahead and I've set up the AI to be animated in the correct way. And I'm going to show it to you. The thing that I want you to notice is when our character spawns in, there's a spawning animation and the AI over here used to have it and it doesn't anymore. And we'll find out why. But now as I get in front of him, he starts running after me. One of the things to also note is that he's got a very big drum. And so he's actually invading my personal space with his drum. And the AI works to follow me and follow me around. You might also see, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm getting these messages about my, my texture budget um, being exceeded. So these textures are, are pretty intense. Uh, so what I thought I would do was I thought I would add another character to this batch and set this other character up as another AI and show you how I animated this one. So this one right here is actually just the player character. I'm going to delete that. So I'm going to pull in my library and I'm going to select another character. Um, all the characters I keep selecting are absolutely enormous. Uh, I'm pretty sure if I select another one, let's, let's not do any of these. Let's do this one. I think, I feel like Twin Blast might be smaller. Nope, Twin Blast is huge. All right, I'm gonna move that off to the side. Uh, and while that's adding to my project, I'm going to do a few other things. So we have this BP enemy AI, uh, and this is what we've been using so far. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to call it AI enemy. I'm going to call it AI enemy two, just because I find it easier to work the numbers when they work that way. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and open this up <clears throat> and I'm going to pull it onto our screen. Okay. So in the viewport right now, this is the big orc troll guy with the drum. As soon as Twin Blast is finished downloading, I'm going to set it up. Um, but while I am here, I'm also going to show you that I have a uh, an AP enemy AI. And this is what I had had previously when we were working with Quinn. And it's really simple, right? There's a speed that is associated with the, the idle walk run and that outputs to the output pose. Now, if I pull in one of these Paragon characters and I look at it, and I zoom out, there's actually a ton of really complex stuff. And I could use that, but the way that our AI is working, it's not using any of that. So what, what I've done is I've actually unplugged the end of this sequence and plugged in our sequence. And that's basically what we're gonna do with Twin Blast. So I wanna move this back off to the side Twin Blast is just about finished. And as soon as Twin Blast is finished, we're gonna go into our BP Enemy AI 2. We're gonna select our mesh, and we're gonna change our skeletal mesh from Narbash to Twin Blast. It's also going to take a second for the shaders to load. It's also X'd out my animation class. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up the Twin Blast animation blueprint, which will now make him properly animated. I'm going to go ahead and compile that. And then I'm going to go and navigate to the Twin Blast animation 
packages that I just looked at. All right, just inputted twin blast characters, heroes, twin blast, and over here should be the twin blast animation blueprint. So if I open that up, Oh, and this is, no, this is not different. I'm just looking, there's jump land states and that's what I'm looking at right now. But if I click on the event graph, this is that big long sequence. And actually, this is not the big long sequence I was looking for. I am looking for the animation graph, not the event state. The event state, we're going to need to do something slightly different. Uh, and to do that, I'm also gonna open up this event graph. Okay, so in our event graph, there is event blueprint update animation, and that's where we're casting to BP enemy AI and we're getting the speed and we're setting the speed. And so that variable is being set in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we don't actually wanna copy that because I know that's being called in the other one. We're gonna copy all of this from our AP enemy AI. We're gonna copy it. We're gonna go into our twin blast animation blueprint. We're gonna make sure we're on the event graph and odds are event blueprint update animation is calling this. And then it's going through a whole long sequence of stuff that ends on this one. And we are going to add to the end of this. Actually, we're just gonna paste into the end of this. And we're going to replace this cast to enemy AI with cast to enemy AI2, because that's the one that we're currently working on. Try and plug that into that, and okay, that worked. Plug this into that, and plug this into that. So I've successfully replaced this one. Hitting delete to get rid of it. And now I'm connecting this. And so in the event graph, we're casting the enemy AI2 and we're getting, we're setting the speed in enemy AI2. And enemy AI2 is where it's utilizing that, wait, no, sorry, hold on. We're casting to it and we're getting the speed because we're taking the velocity and we're setting the speed in ours, pardon me, because when I click on animation graph, double clicking on animation graph, it's opening up this rather complex setup. And in this situation, I'm gonna pull that output pose off. I can break this one over here. And we are going to use The same thing that we have in our BP enemy AI, sorry, this one, animation graph, where we're just gonna have an idle walk run speed and we're gonna put that in our output pose. So what we actually need to do is we need to set up that idle walk run for Twin Blast because it's not something that is currently set up. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say animation, one space 1D. And this time, instead of using the other skeletons, now I'm gonna pick the twin blast skeleton. And so I'm gonna call this twin blast blend 1D. I'm gonna double click it. And here we go. So now we have to find that the same things that we had found previously, we need to find the idle 
usually helps if you spell it right. I make this a little bigger because these names are long and I'm having trouble finding them. So I want to just find the normal idle and drop it in. And then I want to try and find like a walk, walk forward. And I also, I forgot over here on the left, the horizontal axis, we want to set speed and we want to set it to 600. I do believe that was the speed we had them working at before. Let's move that up. And then we want to find something that is walk, not walk, um, something that is run based. So sprint is what I've been finding on a lot of these. And then it's always a good idea to hit control and, and look at this. Or on the Mac, that is gonna be command. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. I can actually close it because I'm not going to need it again. And this is where my screen real estate gets a little tricky because I'm going to want to pull that blend 2D into my animation blueprint for Twin Blast. I'm going to then pull in speed, get speed, and I'm going to plug speed in and combine the skeletons figures there and now it should be idling and when he needs to walk he will walk that I think that means that I can pull this off to the side and if I go back to my main folder enemy AI 2 should be ready to go let's try dropping it in there we are let's press play All right, so they are both chasing me and they are both animated. And they <laughs> are moving really fast. Now one of the other things that I might wanna do would be to set the distance at which they stop following. They're both getting a little too close so if I really was looking at being serious about this, let's pull our window back in. Uh, on the event graph for the BP enemy AI, we have a acceptance radius. And if I turn that acceptance radius up, that is the acceptance radius for Twin Blast. So when Twin Blast gets, he's still pretty close. It's 10, let's try 100. Compile. Okay, that's feeling like a good distance. And I feel like Narbash is gonna need to be like 300. So let's go to BP Enemy AI, which is Narbash. Go to Event Graph and we change our acceptance radius. Let's try 250. Wow, 250 is actually pretty far. Too far. Let's try 180. Compile. The compile for these takes a little bit longer because there is a lot of code in there. Okay, that's feeling pretty good. He's not quite bumping me. They're actually colliding with each other. So Twin Blast is trying to work his way around. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm gonna hit escape. 
and I'll just save that one so I get rid of my asterisk. And I think that's it. So that's setting up your AIs to work like our old AIs with these new characters. There might be some small differences in the scripts uh, when you're looking at them for each of these characters. Twin Blast was a very early character in Paragon uh, and Narbash was a little bit later. So I think that the way that the scripting is done is a little different. It also depends on their actions and their, their movements and their clothing and how the clothing moves. So um, don't get scared if the script looks different. Just look for those terms that I mentioned um, and let me know if you have problems and I can help you with your project getting it to work right.